Okay, let's get started. Well, I'm coming to you from Aiden, California, site of the 2022 Golden State Star Party. Um, it's a uh, first time for me at this event. I've talked to some people that have they come year after year, and they really enjoy the event. So far, I've been making uh, some friends, meeting people, and um, it's uh, been a, a good trip so far. Now, if you saw my last video about my GSSP gear checkout disaster at Blue Canyon, you know I left Blue Canyon with uh, all my gear in questionable uh, condition from uh, my declination access not working at times up in Blue Canyon. Um, plate solving was not working. I just had a host of issues and that was my big trip. Uh, you can see the video, I'll put a link to it, to check everything out, to work through the workflow, to do a multi-panel um, imaging of the Veil Nebula, and uh, nothing worked. And so, you know, I left there really unsure of what to expect when I arrived here at GSSP, and um, it was a long four hours uh, filled kind of with, uh, you know, what's going to happen? Is this trip going to be a total waste or what? But um, uh, I had some good success uh, last night. If you saw my GSS, uh, GSSP imaging plan, uh, I had indicated I was going to sit on the Veil Nebula for four nights, do a two-panel mosaic. I've changed my imaging plan. I want to thank Andy for your feedback on, uh, and sharing with me uh, some images that you did of the Veil Nebula and helped me understand that uh, shooting the uh, S2 was probably not the best use of my time. So I spread that time around the HA and O3. Uh, thank you for that. I really appreciate that, uh, that input. And um, so I'm changing the plan. Tonight uh, will be the second night of the Veil Nebula two panel uh, mosaic. And then I thought it would really be a shame to leave uh, a Bortle one uh, site without having used my ASI 533 MC Pro one-shot color camera with the Optolong L Extreme uh, filter. So for nights three and four, weather permitting, I've decided to step up to a four-panel display to capture both the North America Nebula and the Pelican Nebula in one image. So uh, I'm looking forward uh, to that. And that way I'll have exercised both my cameras under Bortle One Skies. And, um, you know, why not? I have two cameras. I might as well use them. All right, so just real briefly, while I thought I had a disaster on my hand, uh, I was able to get underway. The plate solving issue, uh, for some reason, Nina kept telling me you can't find the ASTAP executable. And then, you know, uh, my mind, I, I remembered that I also have Plate Solve 2. So once I switched over to Plate Solve 2, I had full functionality in the Nina framing uh, uh, wizard or whatever it's called. And I was able to properly frame and I was also properly able to use the command to show what the current orientation of my uh, camera was. So if I had to do a rotation, I knew how much I would have to rotate. So uh, that all worked uh, well. I uh, shot, spent some time on panel one and some time on panel two last night. Uh, I'll spend uh, time again tonight on panel one and panel two and then uh, call it uh, a day as far as the Veil Nebula goes. So let me just show you quickly some of the uh, data I collected. I don't know how uh, it's going to show up uh, on the on the screen, but let's move over to PixInsight. All right, so um, what I've loaded into Blink is I have the uh, Panel 1 HA, and as you can see, it's faint, um, but uh, this panel, I changed the orientation of uh, my panels to be, ver uh, to be vertical instead of horizontal. So I thought, worst case, panel one could be a standalone on its own if I couldn't uh, uh, do uh, two panels together in PixInsight because I ran into some, uh, some type of issue. 
So, you know, I think I've got some good HA signal there. Uh, I'm dithering, of course. And then well, let's just take a real quick look at the uh, O3. Uh, we'll get rid of that. And um, um, panel 1, O3. We'll load these real quickly. So, yeah, I'm a. Uh, what a mental roller coaster at times, or an emotional roller coaster. I didn't know what to expect when I hit here. So I was I was very happy to uh, um, get good performance last night out of my gear, no no hiccups. I did not run OBS Studio because I didn't want to take the chance that that was the app that was causing some instability on my B-Link U59. Uh, I, I really don't know, but... Uh, and then uh, hopefully this shows... So this is... Um, this is the um, 03 signal that I was able to collect. I was doing 180 second uh, exposures. So that uh, to me looks pretty good. And then let's quickly go into panel number two. Uh, okay, panel two. And here is the HA for panel two. I was uh, running up against the Meridian flip. Uh, I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to do the flip. I, I, I needed some sleep because I was up all night at Blue Canyon, uh, trying to resolve issues that I was never able to resolve. But uh, so I, um, I didn't image as long as I could have last night because I wanted to get some sleep. So let's go in. And I think this is what's uh, called the East Vale Nebula. So. Uh, you know, I got some good signal there, I think. Uh, and then we'll take a quick look at the O3. Um, now, it's windy here during the daytime, but the winds kind of uh, dropped down last night. All right, so let's look at this. And hopefully this is... Uh, this is showing up okay uh, on your screens. So overall, um, I was uh, I was pleased with the quality of the data I was able to collect last night. I was pleased that I did not run into any issues once I sorted out my plate solve issue and, and sl uh, switched to uh, from ASTAP to plate solve two things really started to click um, and it was just kind of a, an uneventful uh, night. Uh, Nina has a plugin called, uh, I think it's, uh, well maybe it's a uh, ground station and there's a uh, pushover service that if there's an error or something goes wrong it sends a message to my phone and it plays a siren sound. I, I didn't hear that. I was able to get uh, naps of about uh, 45 minutes uh, at a time uh, so that was a good night which put me into a uh, uh, better position for tonight's uh, imaging so anyway that's pretty much it here for uh, night one I'll add a little of addendum to this video to show how uh, night two turned out well as you can see I'm coming to you from my home it's Sunday the 3rd of July, I made a decision to leave the star party one day early due to the wind forecast as well as uh, the forecast of potentially some clouds. And uh, before I go further, Javier, uh, I want to give you a shout out. Uh, thanks again. I enjoyed uh, meeting you and uh, meeting Joe as well as Mike. And uh, I'm going to put a link to your um, Milky Way uh, time lapse in, in the video description here um, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you again maybe uh, I'll drop in on a Mount Shasta Astronomy Club uh, outing up in uh, up in the Reading area but uh, really enjoyed your company and uh, meeting Joe and, uh, and Mike uh, and it was a lot of fun all right so since I made the decision to leave a day early, I said, okay, the third night, instead of flipping over with the 533 and the um, doing the uh, 
North America Nebula and Pelican Nebula in a four-panel mosaic, I said I'll put this third night uh, into the Veil Nebula. So here is what I wound up with for three nights of imaging the Veil Nebula. I probably could have imaged a little bit longer, but I didn't want to do the meridian flip and then uh, continue imaging. I wanted to get some sleep. So um, I think I wound up with about, uh, what do we got here? We got about 161 uh, lights, and I think when it's all put together, I'll have about four uh, hours of total integration time. Now, um, it was a mixed bag. Um, nights two, I had issues again. I lost control of the declination axis of my mount. Uh, it delayed me. Uh, I didn't get in as many as much imaging time. I ultimately resolved the issue just by shutting everything down and bringing everything back up again, rechecking my polar alignment. And uh, yet night three went beautiful. It was just uh, great to uh, experience. And the only change I really made, uh, and I still don't understand this aspect, uh, and so I'm going to have to dig into it some more, but there's a setting here under alignment and sync. Now I'm going to have to spend more time, uh, let's get this out of the way for a second, there's a lot of documentation, a good wiki on EQ mod. I really have to spend some additional time uh, going through this information, going through the uh, FAQ, uh, the FAQ and everything, and spending some time there. Uh, I, I made a decision to change the setting in EQ mod, and I decided to go and change this one here where it says dialogue based there's two options there's append on sync and dialogue uh, based i have heard people uh speak about they have like a pointing map and all that where they take three points on one side the, in the east three in the west at different altitudes um so i really do need to dig into that area after uh, I made this change from append on sync to dialog based, I, I don't know if that's what made the difference yet, but I was able to kick off the imaging session and it just uh, it ran well uh, the remainder of the night. A couple of call outs though that I, I want to uh, call out is there is this uh, feature here where you can set the minutes until park. So uh, once you uh, have started your uh, mount for the night and it's starting to slew and everything, you can uh, put a value in here and then you can hit this timer and it will execute to the number of minutes that you have set here. And then it will, when it hits those number of minutes, it will automatically return your mount to park. I guess some people have had situations where their mount did not stop, it kept moving. And so this is a little safety feature, I guess. Um, and I tried it out. Now, I ended my imaging sequence before the timer expired. So uh, the timer didn't actually have to execute. And um, so I just thought I'd call that feature out. Now. I had some issues, as you can see up here, with some of my uh, autofocus runs. They were where I was pointing almost up at the zenith before the uh, uh, meridian flip time. I know I still have some work to do in getting proper focus with my new Antalya uh, 3 uh, nanometer uh, filters. So the HA uh, focused fine, and later, uh, the O3 started to focus well, but I've got some more work to do, and that's the great thing about these trips or just any night out where you're imaging. Uh, you, you run into little challenges, and it points you in a direction of, you know, I've got to do some more work in that area. So that 
that all goes with uh, part of the territory. And just to review, um, this was how I had my um, two panels oriented in uh, as far as framing. And I think it was pretty consistent across the three nights. I will find out when I start to process my data. Now, another reason I came home early is I have to be in the Yosemite area on the 5th of July to meet my wife and about 23 people. Uh, there's a big group camping trip and I have to turn the van around, get all my Astro gear out of it and put in, you know, like a grill and, and the pizza oven and all that jazz. So uh, while I am going to try and uh, process the data uh, while I'm on the camping trip, I may not have internet connectivity and while I have the book Inside picks inside, and it's got a good section on doing mosaics. Uh, I may need some supplemental information uh, through YouTube videos, and if I can't get to YouTube because I don't have the connectivity, then that is probably going to slow me down. So I figure a couple of weeks before I'm able to share uh, what I was able to capture and then process in picks insight. Uh, so keep a lookout for that. Um, clearly, on the um, the other thing I, I wanted to point out was um, this was uh, the sequence that I used and I'm getting more comfortable with the advanced sequencer uh, learning the uh, correct commands to use uh, I took a command away but uh, there's a nice feature that wait until time and so I had everything set up and I had it uh, wait until uh, astronomical dusk, and then and then the uh, and then it kicks in. Um, so nothing uh, really significant here. This uh, this worked for me, um, and uh, I thought I had yeah failure uh, to push over. So if you're not familiar with Nina, in the plugins there is ground station. And there's a facility here that if your sequence runs into an error, uh, the pushover service, uh, which is free, uh, will send an alert to your phone, and I have it uh, designed to play a, a siren. Um, so it's just kind of a, a safety measure if you like to take naps along the course of the night. If something goes wrong, it's a way to be alerted. So it's another feature about Nina that I, uh, that I really like. So uh, my sequence uh, proved to, to work well. Um, I was able to cool my ASI 294MM Pro to minus 10C, so that worked, uh, worked well. Um, what else can I, I really uh, show here? Uh, imaging, okay, I went over you know, some of the challenges I have with the uh, autofocus routines. Um, Later in the night, uh, this was a, a, from a prior night, but um, you know they they looked they looked reasonable. Um, here's an O3. I think this is an indication that uh, the, of the backlash here. So when I get a night, uh, probably in my backyard, I'll I'll work on this aspect to improve my um, my focusing with my uh, with my new filters. And was there anything else here? Uh, no, I think that was the, the key takeaway. Um, I'm getting more and more familiar with Nina. I really, I really like it. I really like this framing assistant. Uh, it seems uh, to work well. So now let's maybe go in and take a look at the third night of data and um, come into PixInsight here. And so um, you know, I won't know until I start to integrate these files, but here is, uh, and I realized on the first part of this video when I was showing uh, some of the data in PixInsight, the blink screen was not showing up. Um, that's uh, something I need to improve when I use OBS Studio to capture these things and do these videos. But, uh, you know, I was pretty pretty happy with the with the data I think I'm gonna find that my stars need some improvement as far as focusing 
but uh, you know we'll we'll just see how that goes. Um, so rather than make this video too long, um, maybe I'll just kind of recap. It was a fantastic experience going to the Golden State Star Party. Um, it was a, a challenging experience for me uh, doing a two-panel mosaic, and I, you know, only really dealt with the first part. The I'm sure the uh, Pix Insight part will be a challenge. Um, it was an up and down emotionally uh, with the nothing working the night before I went to the star party up in Blue Canyon, having all kinds of issues, not knowing what to expect, and then getting some good performance on the first night up at the uh, star party, but then running into issues again on the second night where I thought I was kind of going to cruise uh, right through. Um, and then investing the time trying to understand what my issues were during the daytime. And uh, again, I don't know if that dialogue-based uh, change in EQ mod is, uh, is what helped me have a really almost perfect night on the third night, uh, except uh, with the call out that I need to spend some time on uh, better, uh, better focusing on my filters, which I'll do that in the future. So um, I'm home. I've had uh, eight eight point three nine hours of sleep last night, so I feel refreshed. Uh, I'm very excited to see what this starts to look like once I process it and pick insight. And um, you know, I did. I had wanted to make do some interviews at the star party, but I was so focused on trying to research what my issues were, I decided to spend my time. Uh, online, uh, trying to understand what I was dealing with. Um, at the end of the day, I was very satisfied after uh, night three, where everything appeared to work uh, work very well. So I got more work to do. As is often said, uh, astronomical imaging is a marathon, not a sprint. I think for me, that's kind of what makes it fun. I did see uh, a fair number of ASI Air uh, Plus uh, units uh, in uh, attached to the smaller uh, field of view type telescopes uh, among the uh, astrophotographers that were there at the event. I know people say you know it's a it's a very easy approach if you're a beginner. You know I. I think that's great if that's the solution that you choose to use. There's, to me, it's a very diverse community, the astronomical imaging community. And in my uh, conversations with the people I met, the astrophotographers at the event, there's a, a range of solutions. There was a, a person there with the Mellencamp cameras and, you know, um, so that was great. Also, I got to uh, see some images from a, a Raza, you know, again, I'm, I'm still in the back of my, my mind wondering what my next scope is going to be. So it was just a great experience from that. I got to talk to people. I got to learn about their experiences on why they uh, share, uh, why they uh, chose the telescopes uh, that they chose. Uh, one person had like six of them there. Uh, so... Uh, very good experience from that perspective. Unfortunately, I was so heads down trying to solve my problems, I didn't take the opportunity to capture any of that content in an interview format that I could then share with you. So, all right, I don't know what's next. I think what's next is uh, to tr get these images, uh, get this images uh, processed and picks insight, and then wait for the next uh, towards the end of July and go up to uh, Blue Canyon Airport at the uh, Sacramento Valley Astronomical Society dark site and uh, do some more imaging. And maybe I'll do some work for my backyard. I, I made a statement in my GSSP imaging plan. Uh, I said something like, I don't want to downplay uh, the importance of Bortle One Skies. And uh, I, I want to add an addendum to that. These skies, um, up in Aden, which were Bortle One, uh, were visually beautiful. Uh, you know, it was just spectacular. Uh, while my gear was uh, imaging automatically, 
uh, I just kind of stood out there in wonder looking up and it, it just, they're beautiful skies. Uh, that's, you know, what can I say? And uh, clearly I understand why visual astronomers are really excited about Bortle 1 skies. You know, we'll see when I process these images, even with probably a little bit of out of focus stars or a little bit bloated stars or whatever, uh, what this uh, turns out to be. Again, as narrowband imaging, I've seen very good narrowband images under Bortle 7, 8 skies. So I don't know how much impact these Bortle 1 skies are going to make uh, at the end of the day to my images. Uh, in particular, because I'm not the best at processing uh, images yet, but from a visual perspective, it was just fascinating, and I just, you know, enjoyed looking up. And so, uh, if you've not been under Bordeaux One Skies before, you might want to take an opportunity, just, just go up and gaze with your bare eyes at the beauty of the, of the night sky. All right, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. I want to thank everyone for dropping into the channel. I kind of like the comments. This is an interesting channel. It's a little bit different, and it is because as a second-year beginner, I don't really think I can be real authoritative and uh, kind of go into tutorial mode and you know and share those type of things. So what I'm trying to share is what my experience is as a, as a beginner, uh, the feelings I'm having along my journey, the ups, the downs. The emotional roller coaster at times, you know, uh, I think it is all just part of the process. This is a steep learning curve, in my view, and you're just going to have some uh, times that don't quite go as well as you might like them to go. But if you stick with it, this hobby can give you a tremendous amount of satisfaction, and uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, really jazzed up. Uh, and looking forward to this two panel. And then the next thing will be a four panel uh, mosaic uh, with the 533. So I'm looking forward to collecting data to be able to do that. Okay, I've gone on too long. Thanks again. See you next time.